report now. Tell us about jail ministry. <laughs> Good morning, church. Last week we baptized 13 in, in our church service. The chaplain baptized about 24 that early that morning. So we baptized 703 for the year. And since I've been involved, we've baptized over, since 1997 or 1998, we've baptized over 17,000 men and women. Y'all keep us in prayer. 17,000. Let's, let's yeah. say amen. Let's go be clapping now. Let's say amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brother David Tarver, come up, please. Tell us about the White Rock Fund. Fifteen years ago, a fund was started to carry the gospel around the world. It is supported not by churches, but by individual Christians. The funds are invested, and then the money is distributed to gospel preachers and faithful churches around the world. Uh, we're now working in 26 countries to carry the gospel there and supporting gospel preachers. If you'd like to know more about it, you can go to the website, whiterockfund.org. Thank you. about Main Street Church of Christ. We'd like to welcome the East Ridge Church of Christ who's come to help us today. And we want to thank the elders and saints at East Ridge and thank you so very much for being with us. We're having a barbecue picnic out on the parking lot. If Slewfoot causes rain to come about, we will uh, we'll eat downstairs. We'll have to go plates for those of you that are going home. I'd like to report to you that uh, we had 82,809 people come to our website last month. We have established 8,822 home churches throughout the world. We downloaded over 12,000 sermons. We have over 424 people a day come to our website. Most people don't have 424 people coming a year. We preach by shortwave radio, and some people ask why shortwave radio. Some day, uh, say today we have an opportunity to preach and teach to more people alive today. There's over 7 billion people alive today, and there's probably not more than twice that many that's ever lived. We have an enormous opportunity to reach a lost world for Jesus Christ and Him crucified. There's as many people studying English in China today as speak English in the United States. There's 1.2 billion people in India. Our brother Paul Lockman is flying in this morning from India. He's been in India for two weeks. Y'all sent him off with $1,500 to buy Bibles. I can't imagine this church having $1,500 for anything. Our contribution last week was $713. So isn't it amazing how five loaves and two fishes just keep appearing here? It's never been since the first century when the uh, whole world had a common language, Greek, as a second language that we have the opportunity that we have today to uh, reach as many people as we reach. In the United States, most people listen to long wave radio broadcasts. We listen to AM, FM radio. But in the rest of the world, the rest of the world listens to short wave radio. They have their radios and their short wave radios and their cars and their homes and their villages. That guy that had a, I can't think of his name, I'm having a brain lock, he, he was a preacher out in California, uh, Gene Scott, Dr. Gene Scott. He had a church out in California, and he bought a million radios and sent them to Africa where they'd be on nothing but his station. And you turn a little generator, and you could listen to it in them villages in Kenya and Nairobi and all them places. You turn that little generator, and you could listen to Gene Scott on the radio. And we got his radio channel. And so uh, we got a million people in, in Africa that can't listen to nobody but the Main Street Church of Christ. And so that'll just show you what God can do. And uh, uh, amazing, isn't it? It's estimated that in the world there are three billion, not million, 
billion shortwave radios. And at any one time, one billion of those shortwave radios are turned on, and three people are huddled around that one radio. So almost half the world's population is listening to somebody out there. And we're rapidly becoming the somebody out there. All must hear, all must be told. We want you to dream the dream, see the vision. Put up the map there. This is Paul Lockman in India, and uh, this shows you where we're broadcasting in the United States. We're broadcasting out here to Abilene, shaming the change movement. Randy, whatever his name is, said that he was a postmodern, liberal, pantheist, happily situated in the churches of Christ. And he wasn't going nowhere. They have given him tenure at ACU, and his job is to teach every Bible major who graduates, they got to go to his class. I don't know if you know what postmodern means. It means that people don't believe in the inerrancy of the Bible and they believe that it changes with the time and it was good for them days and it's not good for us today. And a pantheist believes that God is ev everything. Not that he's everywhere omnipotent and all-powerful, but he's everything. That's what Buddhists believe. And so we're broadcasting in Abilene trying to have an influence on preacher students. We broadcast to all of North Texas uh, on 1630 AM radio. When you get through worship, you can just go out and tune us in on your car. We broadcast to all of Oklahoma City out of uh, right up there where the university, uh, Oklahoma Christian University is out of in in Oklahoma, which is real close. We broadcast out of Circuit, Arkansas on three different stations. We're simulcast on three different stations out of Arkansas. And out of Nashville, Tennessee, we broadcast uh, to all of Tennessee, Alabama, northern Mississippi, and Kentucky. If you'll change to the next map, please. This is Europe. We just bought... We have a contract came in the mail to me Saturday. And here's a map of Europe. This is Spain. This is Morocco, North Africa. This is Europe here. This is, these are different bands of frequency that tells people how great their reception is. And so in Europe, in Europe, this band here that is 45% gets excellent reception. Everybody gets some reception. No matter whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley low, you get reception. It's just what kind of reception you get. The next group is 40% get excellent, and the rest get less than excellent. And under excellent is extremely fine, fine very fine, fine, very good, and then good, and then poor. And so an enormous amount of people, we get all of Europe is listening to the radio. We're, we signed that contract. We needed $75 a week to complete that contract for the year, and we've got that. That's already got. We don't need any money at all. That's paid for. Let the church say amen. Amen. So starting December 1st, we'll be broadcasting to all of Europe. Now, I know how to negotiate with these radio people. She started at $250 a week. time we got through, she was in tears, and she, uh, and she uh, it was $175 a week. Go to the next map. And as a bonus, we get all of North America free. This is all of North America. We get it free. This is Canada. I got a call from a guy from Canada that had chickens in his living room. Chickens in his living room. And he said, the only church up here is a Baptist church, and they won't baptize me. And I'm wondering when the ice melts, can I go down to Creek and baptize myself? 
I said, well, what I'd rather you do, do you ever go to town? And he says, I go to Montreal once a year. I said, fine. I said, call me back next week, and I will get a hold of Montreal Church of Christ, and next year when you go up there, you can uh, be baptized. So he did, and he was baptized, and he came back, and he baptized his brother in the creek. Next map, please. We also get all of South America free. So by buying Europe, we get the entire world for one package of $175 a week. Next map, please. This is the only one that we haven't done yet that we hope to do. For $103, we can get all from broadcast $103 a week if there's some millionaire out there with an oil well that wants to purpose your money. Well, here's a way to do it. It's broadcast from the island of Papua New Guinea right off the coast of China. You see yellow represents the most excellent 66% receiving within the boundaries of China right here. This is Africa. So it shows you that it gets all of Europe, all of China, all of Russia, all of Mongolia, and all of the Pacific Rim. Right in here are people who, 1.2 billion people in India that speak English in here. And so for a little bit of nothing, we're going to be able to get that. That's the only one that we had not got. Next map, please. This is a population timeline, and this shows that back uh, at the time of Jesus Christ, it was about estimated if China, if they have the right figures for China, there was about 300 million people on the earth about the time that Christ died. About 1200 A.D. is about 450 million. In 1611, when the King James translation of the Bible was made, there was about 500 million people on the earth. During the colonial period, there was uh, about 795 million people on the earth. And here's a man right here, our missionary back from India. And um, uh, in 1850, the line... Now, we're right to here. We're right to here, and there's less than a billion people on the earth. In 1850, is the first time as a billion, that was the time that we had the war with Mexico. In 1900, there was 1,656,000,000. In 1950, the time of the Korean War, they was 2,500,000,000, halfway on that line. In 1995, there was 5 billion people. In 2011, there was 6 billion people. Now there are seven, over 7 billion people on the earth. Never has there been an opportunity to teach and baptize as many people as there are in the world today and so what we need to do is give them real Bible and not cool whip sermons. That's what they need. Next map, please. You got the one that's got Radio Madagascar? We might not have that on there. No. No. Okay, there's uh, one in the bulletin. Take a look at it there. Radio Madagascar is Madagascar's an island off the coast of Africa. The Church of Christ has set up three antennas there that are bigger than football fields. One antenna will, bra will broadcast back towards Africa and get all of Africa and South America. The second antenna will get from Canada all the way over to Russia. The third antenna will get Russia, China, and all of the Pacific. So when we go on one, we're on all three of those worldwide, and we have, have a contract with them beginning January 1st. And so by January 1st, we hope to be preaching five times to all the earth, 
And I'm telling you, I'm going to keep doing this till I die. I want to be preaching 24 times. The sun should never set on the preaching of the gospel of Christ from the Main Street Church of Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. Open your Bibles with me, please, to Matthew chapter 7. Let's practice what we preach. Matthew chapter 7. We'll catch up where we were last week. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that you be not judged. Talking about condemning or harsh judgment with bitter, fault-finding spirit. It does not mean form an opinion. Because Jesus says in John 7, 24, Judge not according to the appearance of things, but judge righteous judgment. In Romans chapter 2, verse 1, the Apostle Paul tells the Jews, specifically speaking to them, and us also, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judge another, thou condemnest thy own self, for thou that judgest doeth the same thing. Verse 2, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You mean I can't lie and I can't squirm and I can't get out of it some way? I can't tell some kind of tall tale and get out of it? No, the judgment of God's according to truth. Then I can't be saved based on truth. I've got to have another way to be saved, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. There's an escape clause here. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's keep going. Um, drop with me down to Matthew 7, 2. For what, what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. And what measure you met, it shall be measured to you again. Our own standard of judging others will be applied to us. God has so arranged it that every man will be paid back with his own coin according to how he has judged others. Matthew 7, verse 3. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, and considereth not the beam that is in thy own eye? Behold means to stare at and observe. Why do you observe so closely the small faults of others when you have greater faults your own self? It is an amazing thing that the most judgmental people have a hidden sin. They have a sin. They got them Playboy magazines they're looking at in the closet. They've got some kind of thing going on or they would not be as hard-hearted and as judgmental as they are. Matthew 7, 4. Or how will I say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thy eye, and beholdest not the beam that's in thy own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. The one, uh, the man who finds fault with another for sins that he is more guilty of is a hypocrite. And that's exactly what we have as many, many hypocrites. Matthew 7, 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under feet, and turn again and rend you. Dogs here probably represent small, uh, snarling, scoffing opposers, people who cause trouble. We had to run one off this morning, give her to the police. Crazy, throw the fit, and that's all right. We throw the net on her, and police come, took her away, and that's good enough. Jesus is cautioning for us to learn the true value of sacred things about casting pearls before swine. There's some people who won't try to do good and won't try to get along, and so we just have to throw a net on them, let the police handle them. Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. This is in reference to prayer. 
These constitute a climax here we're coming up to in this great Sermon on the Mount we've been studying. Ask implies a simple petition. Seek indicates earnest prayer and a search. Knock shows perseverance in spite of hindrance. We thought that we were going to be hindered regarding this, these extra radio programs. But God made the money available. It was absolutely wonderful. We had great damage to our parking lot out here, and I sick, we caught a truck, a Cisco truck on it, and I sick Calhoun the lawyer on them, and he snarled and barked and wrote them a nasty letter, and they offered us $8,100, and we took it. So we figured we could patch some of that for a couple of thousand, a couple of three thousand, and then this opportunity came up to get these radio stations, so we needed $4,550 to do that, so we did it. And then we needed another $4,550 to pay for the year, and so a guy sent me $2,300 on PayPal and, uh, for a contribution to the church. He got a blessing, and I got a phone call Friday that says, uh, I got a blessing, and I got $1,600 for you. So that pays the whole thing. So God is really telling us, what are you waiting on? Amen. I mean, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Right. He's got everything. What are we waiting on? Let's take the gospel to the whole wide world. Right. So God wants us to progress in our praying from ask to I want this, Lord, to seek what do you really want for me, Lord, to knock... I'll do whatever you want. He wants us to go from I want to what do you want to I will. And so I hope that you'll progress in your prayer life that way. We'd like to encourage our radio audience to visit the Church of Christ nearest your home or come to our website at www.mainstreet-churchofchrist.com. There's a thousand sermons on there in our library, a thousand links, a thousand written lessons, if you're in China, you can print them in Chinese, download them. If you're in Mongolia, you can print them in Mongolese, and so whatever you, then they're, and they're spoken in Texican around here, just in case you hadn't noticed. And so let's turn to Matthew 7, verse 9. Or what man is among you who will ask his son bread and will give him a stone, if he asks fish, and give him a serpent? The assurance of an answer to prayer is based on the fact that God's our Father. Verse 11. If you then, be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to those that ask Him? Whoever believes that God is His Father uh, can carry this figure of speech to its ultimate conclusion. You can expect good gifts. Verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye also unto them, for this is the law and the prophets. This is a fundamental principle of the kingdom of God and the church of Christ. It is said in a positive way and not a negative way. Matthew seven thirteen. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. This term that's used in the Bible, the way, the faith, the path, the many, the church, it always is code words in the church of Christ. Learn this. The Masons, they have secret handshakes and stuff. We in the Church of Christ understand what these words mean. It's not a way, it's the way. It's the one and only way. We sing a song about it. There's just one way to the pearly gate, to the crown of life and the souls that wait. That old crossroads on the way called straight, for there's just one way to the pearly gate. There's just one faith. A bunch of faiths is not going to get it. There's just one baptism. There's just one Lord. That's all there is. This is a leading thought in this discourse. The narrow way is opened 
only to those that knock, those that are seeking. Augustine says, what makes the gate so straight is that we, and so narrow, is that we want to take in our pride and our self-will and our daring sins in the gate with us. We need to unload all our pack. We need to unload all those sins that so easily beset us and run with patience the race that's set before us. The word faith is often applied in the Bible subjectively, talking about one's inner trust with reliance in Christ to save us. What one believes, what I believe, a synonym for belief, meaning my belief, my faith. But the term the way or the faith is used interchangeably, and especially where the article in the Greek is used, and we translate the, uh, that we translate the word the. The word in Greek is, is tis pistuis, and so uh, it, it means, and it's in, in an objective genitive, objective sense, meaning the whole body of truth that's found in New Testament Christianity, the pattern of New Testament Christianity. We just got through studying 1 Peter, and I, excuse me, 2 Peter, I want you to turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 1, very quickly, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God in Jesus Christ. See that word knowledge there? It's not nostos like it generally is. It's a epigonostos. And what it means, what that word means is a precise, true knowledge of New Testament Christianity. It's not just some sort of knowledge. It is true knowledge. Now look at verse 3. According as his divine power hath, past tense verb, hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. By the time Peter wrote that, the New Testament revelation was complete. Everything was written probably but Jude and Revelation. And he could say, the revelation has been given to you. God has given us everything. And he had to give it to us. He gave it to us right here in the book. He's given us everything that pertained to life and knowledge. Now if you turn to the next chapter, we studied just a few weeks ago. In, in chapter 2, verse 1, But as they were false prophets also among the people, even as they should be false teachers among you, who shall privily, see that word privily? It means right along beside. For every truth of God, the devil has a lie. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned. It takes just as much power and just as much authority to change that verse to have it read, He that believeth and is sprinkled shall be saved, as it took to enact the verse in the first place. So where you have a man changing the word of God You have a man who is anti-Christ instead of Christ in place of Christ. He substituted himself for Christ. Anybody who changes the word of God is anti-Christ. And John says there's not one anti-Christ coming. He said even now there are many anti-Christs. And they went out from us. They used to be back in the first century part of true religion but they went out from true religion and they started their own outfit. They're false teachers. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 23, we're going to get an understanding of this term, the faith. But before the faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Now you see the translators didn't put the faith, they put faith. 
But in the Greek, it says the faith. Greek, tis, peace to us is there. The article should be there. There's just one faith. Verse 24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by the faith. Verse 25, And after the faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. So it's not just my belief that saves me. It is the whole corpus of New Testament Christianity that saves you. The fivefold worship, the taking the Lord's Supper, the one true church, the right name, the right singing, the right practice, the right oversight of churches, the right organization. It's all together. It's all New Testament Christianity. For you're all the children of God by the faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 27. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ to put on Christ. We do not become the children of God by the law of Moses, but by the faith, peace, peace to us. It's the faith, because there's only one faith. Ephesians 4, verse 4 and 5. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called and one hope you're calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's all. Those of you who are visiting today, let me tell you what it's like. It's like you've been on a manure truck and you fell off the back and you landed in a field of clover and wildflowers in the land of milk and honey. This is the place that you can find salvation and rest for your soul. This is the place that you can find mercy. God says, the mercy, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Shakespeare says about that, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth from heaven as a gentle rain. On a place beneath, here on earth, tis twice blessed. It blesses him who gives and him who takes. I'm telling you, when I give a sandwich out, it blesses the guy that's hungry. And it blesses me who gives it. It blesses him and gives and him it takes. It's mightiest in the mightiest. And it behooves a crowned monarch better than a crown. So if you're rich and powerful, you want something better than a crown, be merciful. Be merciful. It'll be better than a crown for you on the judgment day. We'd like to encourage our radio audience to visit the Church of Christ nearest your home. Come to our website at www.mainstreet-churchofchrist.com. There's a thousand sermons on there, a thousand written lessons. Print them up, use them up, give them out. Isaiah 35, verse 8. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness for the unclean shall not pass over it. Man, I'm telling you, you've got to have your sins washed away if you want to get in this kingdom of God and get in this church of Christ. The unclean will not pass over it, but it shall be for those wayfaring men. Those fools shall not err therein. This stuff is so simple. It's like two and two. Two and two is four. And I can count them, one, two, three, four. And Professor Smart and Professor Twiddly D.D. will never be able to convince me that it's five. I'm telling you, a fool will not err therein. An idiot can read, repent, and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins and know what it means. I have some people here from Montana and I had them read the Bible last night, the night before. We were talking about the second coming of Christ. And I took them to John 6, 40, and I said, read that verse. And so they read it, and I got them to the last day, and I will raise him up on the last day, raise him up on the last day. I said, just keep that in mind. 
Now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. We're talking about that secret rapture them Baptists believe about. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. When's that? The last day. It's not seven years before some great tribulation. It's the last day. An idiot won't mess that up. A fool shall not err therein. You can't help but understand the Bible. A convoy travels as fast as the slowest ship. And this stuff is written in plain old Texican where you can understand it. It's not written, it's not written in classical Greek. It's written in Keone Greek, the Greek of the marketplace, isn't it, David? It's written in the common language of the people. In fact, the King James translators insisted that the word roll off the tongue, didn't they, David? That it, that it have the ring of Scripture. He's an expert in how we got the Bible. Let him come preach at your church, Eastfield. You'll, you'll really enjoy it. He teaches a lesson and has got beautiful old Bibles and stuff. But they insisted that the word roll off your tongue and that it, that it, it be exactly what is spoken in the Word of God in the common language of man. When the Bible first was offered to the English people in their own language, there was 20,000 people standing outside the church in London, England, trying to get in to hear Tinsdale's copy of, of, the, the, of, the, of the Word of God spoken in the modern English. That church today doesn't have 40 or 50 people in it. The rest of them are tourists coming through it. 20,000 outside the door that was hungering for the Word of God. Times they are changing. Jeremiah chapter 32, 39. And I'll give them one heart in one way. I'm telling you, there's just one way. That they may fear me forever. For the good of them. God says it's for the good of you that you just got one way. That you'd become confused if there was a bunch of ways. Some churches you go forward this morning and you ask them, what must I do to be saved? And they said, oh, just believe, and that's all you got to do. And then other churches, they tell you, oh, you got to say the sinner's prayer. Well, find me that in the Bible, and I'll eat the whole Bible without salt and pepper if you find the sinner's prayer in it. I'll eat it right now this morning. I'll eat it page for page. Just find me the sinner's prayer in there. And then other churches, they tell you, oh, you got to come down to mourner's bench down here and pray your way through. And then other places, they tell you, well, just show up dressed like a chicken and you're good to go. You know? They got all kinds of answers. Matthew 7, 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many, 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 many be that go in there at. The vast majority of people are going to go in the wrong gate. The vast majority of people are going to be in the wrong building. The vast majority of people are going to hear the wrong message today. The vast majority of people are going to be lied to today. There's just one way to the pearly gate. Because straight is the gate, and there is the way that leads to life, and few, 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 few there be that find it. John 6, 14, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So we know what the gate is. We got to go through Jesus. And we're going to find out in a while it's his death, burial, and resurrection we got to go through. John, in Luke 18, 8, Jesus asked a rhetorical question. He said, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Speaking about his servants that are persecuted. Then he says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh at the end of time, shall he find 
And the word there is the faith. Shall he find the faith on the earth? Jesus is saying at the end of time when the Son of Man comes, the faith is going to be a real minority. There's just few of us. We got a lot of visitors today. There's just few of us. Many are called and few are chosen. When Jesus returns, will he find original New Testament Christianity where he comes, when he comes. Jude 3. Beloved, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once, in modern translations there say, once and for all time delivered unto the saints. Because of the danger of the church is exposed to by false teachers, Hold fast to that truth that you've received. Strenuously contend for that faith system that you receive from the Lord and from His holy apostles. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. Now, in Acts chapter 2 verse 41 it says, And the Lord added to their number. And in Acts chapter 2 verse 47 it says, and the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. So God is adding. Now, we see in Acts chapter 6, 7, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied. Something has happened. We've gone from adding to multiplying. It's like the danger of cancer. Most things, most diseases, you get sick like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You gradually. But cancer goes 2, 4, 8, 12, uh, 16, 32, 64, 128. It multiplies. It doubles all the time. Cancer doubles. That's the danger of it. Well, that's the goodness of the gospel. The gospel first adds and then it multiplies as we're going to see. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the faith, of priests were obedient to the faith. In Acts 13, verse 7, speaking of the Apostle Paul, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimaeus, a sorcerer for whom uh, by name interpretation was stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith, to turn him away from personal faith and trust in Christ also, but from that faith system that's the church of Christ that are previously described that began on the day of Pentecost where it was said of those on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers. And then, of course, in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, it says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to play the guitar, that's not what that says, is it? When the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to play the banjo, play the organ, play trumpets, to take up the offering, what did they come together for? To break bread. So it was the whole purpose of the New Testament church to come together to take the Lord's Supper to break bread like we've done this morning. Now, you might think, well, that isn't important, preacher. Well, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show or proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Has he come yet? Then we're supposed to still be doing it. And then, of course, Acts 2.42 says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking the bread and prayer. So you're to be taking the Lord's Supper, proclaiming His death till He comes, and you're to do it steadfastly 
and you're to do it how often? Upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. So every Sunday you're to break bread. So if you're in Mongolia and you didn't know this great principle, the restoration movement, y'all just need to con break bread in your own homes. Those of you that are in Syria that are being persecuted by ISIS, you just need to take the Lord's Supper in the privacy of your own home and worship God in your own home. Those of you in Iran and Saudi Arabia and all the places you can't worship, we've encouraged you to worship in your home. That's part of our broadcast so that you can hear the gospel, that you can have a, a good lesson, and then we want you to worship, do the other five things, or five things make up worship. You sing, you preach, you pray, you take the Lord's Supper, and you give. We want to supply the preaching. You do all the rest of it in your own home. Keep your contribution there. Buy Bibles for people. Spend it on the poor. Do good works in your own area. Let's, uh, let's drop down to Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we through much tribulation must enter into the kingdom of God. Continue in the faith, not in some kind of faith. Disciples are literally scholars, and I want you guys to read your Bibles and be scholars. Acts 16, 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Look at that. The disciples were added daily. Then the disciples were multiplied daily. Now churches are being added daily. We can help do that. We can help add churches daily to the kingdom of God. People can worship at their own home. They can worship God all over the world where they're oppressed. They can be Christians every day. We plant new house churches. Acts 24, 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way, which they call heresy, so worship I God of my fathers, believing all things are written in the law and the prophets. In Romans 1, 5, Paul says, By whom also we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations. Because of grace, the gospel truth that was revealed by the holy apostles, we have genuine obedience to the faith. Romans 14, 1, Him that's weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. The, the Jew who still keeps kosher food laws, you can receive him as a brother, uh, just don't allow it to become a matter of constant disputing. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, Watch ye and stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men and be strong. Quit or behave yourself as men and not as children. Charles to and fro with every wind of doctrine and slide of men. God expects men to have a backbone. God expects you to stand up and be a man. Really be a man for Christ. It takes a man to stand up and be a man. And of course it takes a Christian woman to stand up and be a Christian woman when women are trying to lead you astray or when you're talking with the girls. In all the things that we do in life, be God's person. That's what he wants you to do. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Compare yourself to all of New Testament Christianity and see if you're really in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know your own self. Know you how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Paul is saying, <clears throat> try yourself. Examine your own hearts. Compare it to what's written. Are you in Christ? Are you becoming Christ-like? Do you possess the fruits of the Spirit? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance, against which there is no law. Paul speaking about the churches in Galatia, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past 
now preaches the faith that he once destroyed, God's greatest miracle. He took the greatest persecutor of Christianity and made a Christian preacher out of him. In Ephesians 4.13, till we all come to the unity of the faith, God, I wish it had happened, but it's not going to happen in the United States of America. Now, the whole world out there is open to the principles of the restoration movement. The people in Africa haven't heard this stuff yet. Bill Crossman went to Mongolia and went to a Christian church and uh, they were worshiping on Saturday. And he told them, no, no, said you're supposed to worship on Sunday, the first day of the week, and you're supposed to take the Lord's Supper. And the minute they read the book, they said, oh, that's what we'll do. The minute they read the verse, they were happy to do they were happy that some man, it, they were like the blind. And how can I except some man guide me? David sends them out all the world guiding people. These missionaries, Paul's been over there teaching preachers in India, guiding those Indian preachers to teach these people to worship right, to do New Testament Christianity, the real stuff. Colossians 1.23, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which under heaven, I, Paul, have made a minister. You'll be unreprovable if you continue in the faith of New Testament Christianity. Well, I wish we had time to go on and on and on. We'd like to ask our radio audience to go to our website at www.mainstreet-churchofchrist.com. There's free downloadable acapella singing on there, thousand sermons, thousand written lessons. You can uh, uh, hear it all on there. So why don't you go to our website, www.mainstreet-churchofchrist.com. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, 15, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto thee the gospel. Paul says, I'm going to tell you what the gospel is. And verse 3 he tells us what it is, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What scriptures? Well, like Isaiah 53, like Psalms 2, Psalms 22, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 11. There's over 300 scriptures in the Old Testament that prophesy the coming of Christ exactly when he'll be born. It prophesies his death, burial, and resurrection from one cover of the book to the other. There's just one way to the pearly gate and just one story told in the whole book, and that's Jesus is coming He's going to die on the cross for your sins. He's going to be buried, and he's going to raise again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, if you believe that gospel, there's no reason whatsoever for you to be lost. You can repent of your sins. You can change your mind. The Bible says, Godly sorrow worketh repentance. You can repent of your sins. You can march right down to the front down here and confess Jesus Christ is Lord before men. You can put your faith and your trust and your confidence in God to save you. You can be baptized into Christ. The Bible says in Romans 6, Know ye not so many of us have been baptized into Jesus Christ, have been baptized into his death. Therefore, being buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So what, do you, what does God want you to do, sinner? He wants you to die to sin just like Christ died on the cross. He wants you to be buried in a watery grave of baptism, and he wants you to rise to walk a brand new life. If you're here this morning you're ready to become a Christian, if you have sin in your life, you need the help of the church of prayers of the church. Won't you come now while we stand and sing?